Okay, then please, it's your floor. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Hassan. I'm an education consultant and teacher trainer and I'm the founder of Teaching ESL Hub. And I also teach at is a language instructor at the Faculty of Economics and Politics at Cairo University. Uh, today, I would like uh, to discuss the idea of the Sefer, new Sefer revisions, uh, especially how to use it in time of crisis, especially with listening and speaking. And uh, at the same time, we'd like to discuss the different changes that already took place with the uh, new Sefer revisions and how we can benefit from it as uh, teachers. Uh, can you tell me before we start, uh, what does the word Sefer refer to? The Sefer is an abbreviation for what? Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, yes. Yes, yes, that's right. Common European Framework. Common European uh, Framework of Reference for Languages. Before yeah. we get ahead with the uh, history of the framework and how it started and how uh, um, uh, to use it in class and what are the changes that happened to it, I'd like you to take a quick look at this uh, lesson. Would you kindly tell me uh, what is the main objective of this lesson? You can write in the chat if you'd like to. Take a quick look. We have Alan, we have Noriko, uh, and Gabrielle, of course. <laughs> uh, would, uh, what do you tell me? What's the main objective of this lesson? <clears throat> Any ideas? Discuss habits to communicate daily routine. Yes, that's great. Uh, uh, and um, uh, why, what is the objective behind discussing the habits and the daily routine? What's the objective behind it, the main objective of the lesson? What's the main objective behind the lesson? Not just what's the objective of the small lesson itself or the, the, the small part of the lesson, the, the whole idea in general, if we are going to do a listening, if we are going to use the present simple tense, and they, they are going to speak about the daily routine, what, what's the, the, the main objective behind this? When we mix them all together. Yes. Yes, yes, exchange information about familiar things and to communicate, yes, that's right, yes. The most important thing is to not to use the present simple and not to do the listening and see if they are right or wrong. The most important thing is that they are going to practice it for real language use. How to practice using the present simple and speaking about something that they do in everyday life. And this is the most important idea behind in the lesson. Also take a look at this second lesson and tell me what would be the objective. There can be more than one objective. You can suggest as many objectives as you wish because it's a comprehension passage so you can use it any way you like. So one, uh, some of the objectives would be what? understand the text, would that be an objective? For sure, it's a small objective, but what would be a greater objective, main idea behind the usage of the comprehension passage itself? Understand the text, literacy, reading, you mean? Oh, why not? Why not? It can be. Any other ideas, Nuriko or Alan, any ideas? new experiences again so they are using the language for real language use it can be it can be so we can use this comprehension passage to develop speaking we can use it to develop reading we can use it to develop the vocabulary of the language itself so we always need to look at the bigger picture behind the lessons that we are introducing and this takes us to the um, 
most important objective, why the Sefer was already made. Fundamentally, the Sefer uh, was mainly prepared to be a tool to assist the planning of curriculum courses and examinations by working backwards from what the users or learners need to be able to do with the language. Notice the usage of the learners need to be able to do. This is the most important thing, looking backwards or working backwards towards the needs of the students. So whenever we have any kind of curricula or a course or we are preparing any one of them, we need to um, uh, understand or have a very good idea about uh, the needs of our students before we decide which course or which curriculum are we going to use. So this is going to help us to put the right curricula in place in order to help our students to really develop with the use of the language. Because if we don't do that, uh, our students would always either feel that they are always, always backward, means they are failing behind and they are not achieving any kind of progress, or that our students will feel that the, uh, la that the level is too easy for them and they are not gaining any benefit from it. So it's very, very important that we uh, keep in mind what are the, the needs of our students? Why do we want to put a certain curricula? Why, uh, if we're going to put it, uh, what is the main aim behind putting the curriculum in a certain way. And this takes us back again to the history of the Sefer. <clears throat> Uh, the Sefer was started by the Council of Europe uh, as the, the main part of a project of language learning for European citizenship between 1880. In 1996, and the main aim of the whole project was to provide a method of learning, teaching, and assessing which applies to all languages of Europe. So notice here again, method of learning, teaching, and assessing students. So in November 2001, they have set forward the idea and they started working on the Sefer and they produced the first original uh, copy of the Sefer which started in 2001. At that time, they divided the skills according uh, to which we can um, assess our own students into six levels that you already know, A1, B1, A1, A2, B1, B2, and C1, C2. And they call the basic speaker, independent speaker, and proficient speaker. These were the six main uh, skills for them. And at that time, they uh, these skills were used in Europe mainly uh, for exams like the IELTS exam, for example, to, de to uh, decide the level of the students before they can travel for different scholarships or work maybe or even immigration or for doing any kind of projects concerning the language in Europe. So um, now, um, by the end of 2017, they started again thinking of how can we use <clears throat> how can we use the uh, new Sefer to develop, uh, how can we help to develop the new Sefer with the new changes that are taking place in Europe and around the world? Because they found out that lots of immigrants are coming from around the world and um, it, it's no longer, uh, the idea of the Sefer is no longer helping teachers enough to help their own students. So they started thinking of how can we help the teachers more? So they did lots lots of interviews and surveys all around Europe uh, for about almost two years, and they finally produced the new companion volume in 2018. Uh, uh, during the, uh, um, uh, uh, during the um, uh, interviews and surveys that they did, many teachers complained that uh, they, when they wanted to feed their students in the different skills, they were not able to do that because uh, some of them we were usually between, a, for example, A1, A2, or A1, A2, and B1, and they would not fit exactly into one of them. So when they started the new revisions of the Sefer, they added here a, a pre-A1 level, and then A1, A1+, plus, A2, A2+, plus, B1, B1+, plus, B2, and B1+. Plus. These are the new skills that they get. So in order to help the teachers to understand in the past, uh, they had descriptors and these for for the six levels for each level and for each level they had descriptors explaining what would the level of the student be if they are at a one concerning the four skills of the language listening speaking reading and writing if they are in a one how would they 
be with, uh, doing with the listening? How would they be doing with the speaking, uh, reading, and writing? So when they started the new revisions and they added these uh, uh, additionals, they also changed the uh, descriptors in a way that would help the teachers not only understand, be able to assess their own students, but to help them with different ideas that can be followed into class. So this is how they changed it. In, instead of just uh, having to uh, discuss the whole idea through the four uh, sk uh, skills of the language, they divided it into four uh, competences. They said that they are going to have general competences communicative language competences, communicative language activities, and strategies. With the general competence, competences, they added four items. The first one is called savoir. This is a French word, which means to know, the knowledge. It's the knowledge that we pass on to the students. When we pass the knowledge on to the students, how are we going to help them to practice that through different kinds of exercises? So that's what they call savoir faire. So savoir faire is that they got the knowledge, for example, you explain the present simple tense, and you are giving the students exercises in order to apply what they have already understood. Maybe you are going to give them choose the correct answer or uh, true or false or uh, correct the verbs between brackets. This is called savoir faire. The other uh, third one, which is called savoir être, uh, which means, sorry, which means um, how to use the language learned or the items learned in order to speak about a certain subject or topic like the one that we have just done that the students are going to speak about sleep about their own habits daily habits and then savoir apprendre how to apply to everyday life speak about different topics in everyday life not just we choose certain topics to speak about through the lesson in the book, but we also ask the students to use the present simple te tense to speak about their real daily life, their real habits, their real family attitude, and so on. And at the same time, we have to keep in mind the competitive language competences, which is the linguistic side. Linguistic, we have taught them some kind of grammar. And with the grammar, we have taught them some kind of some vocabulary. So we are going to help with this knowledge of grammar and the vocabulary to help them to speak about social, social topics, like, for example, the change of the weather, the climate change, the problems of pollution, uh, the problem of bullying at school, uh, how to make friends, different kinds of topics. But when we want to make it more strong, we can uh, move to the pragmatic level, which is the real language use, as I have just mentioned. Again, to speak about their daily life, their daily habits. If they have, a, if, if we are going to ask them to speak about bullying, why not ask them if you have been uh, exposed to bullying or any of your friends or relatives have suffered from such a point, and what happened, and what do you think they should have done, for example. And then, instead of discussing the uh, all these items uh, through the four skills of the language, listening, speaking, reading, writing, they gather them into first receptive and productive skills. As you know that the receptive are the listening and the reading skills. And the productive are the um, speaking and the writing skills. And how they added to them, not just the to uh, the four skills of the language, but they added two very important items, which are interaction and mediation. Interaction, we are going to speak about it in details in, in a few minutes, how to make your classes as interactive as possible and using certain media. And we are going to see what is the medium. And at the same time, there are strategies that they had pointed out uh, concerning the different methodologies that the teachers use. But be, be, keep in mind that they mentioned quite clearly that we are not forcing or we are not implying any kinds of methods on the teachers to use. We are just raising questions and helping teachers with ideas that can help them to get in class and make them as interactive as possible to help their students to develop, get interested and develop the learning of the language as well. Let's take the first uh, one uh, of the community language activities, which is the reception. How did they deal with it? They have divided the receptive activities into overall listening comprehension, overall listening comprehension, audiovisual, and the strategies again once more. And as I have mentioned before, that they have set different kinds of ideas, suggestions for to keep in mind in order 
to use uh, in class while they are preparing their lessons. For example, understanding interaction between two speakers. F for example, uh, of course, when we are teaching the language, especially if we are working with with beginners or intermediate students, we have to start with interaction between two persons first, and then we move to more complicated situations. So they have suggested here understanding interaction between two speakers, uh, listening to a member of a live audience, for example, somebody giving a TED talk, for example, or a president is giving a speech, listening to announcements and instructions in case you would like to apply the usage of, for example, must and should and can and so on, listening to audio and media recordings from different films, different programs, football matches, things of the sort. And they have set parallel ideas like this with the reading as well. So, and they have even set an audio visual one where which mixes between both of them, they can listen and watch at the same time and they can read the comprehension passage and they can then be divided into groups which, they, which is one of the most important items that they insisted on to divide the students into groups or pairs and ask to give them questions, certain questions or activities to be done in order to discuss the material uh, being studied, whether it's listening or reading. Uh, we are going to get to this idea of interaction and show you what they have suggested. The, this is for reception. As for the idea of um, production, sorry, they have a production, as we said, concerns speaking and concerning writing. Again, they have suggested different ideas. We have mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago that with the listening, you can listen to two persons speaking and then complicate the whole idea. So here we ha can have also a sustained monologue describing experience. So if we have listened to two people speaking about the problem with the traffic, for example, so the students can present what they have already understood, either through an exercise or through different questions, and then they can speak about a personal experience. So here we are using the knowledge gained. They have learned a few words through the listening. They have discussed the topic of the listening. They have understood it. And then we can help them to speak about personal experience. So again, here we move, as we have mentioned before, uh, through the competences that they mentioned from the savoir, meaning the knowledge, the savoir fair, the savoir or uh, prompt, a prompt, means to be able to speak about the everyday life uh, topics uh, using the language learned or the vocabulary learned. So again, different ideas are mentioned here. It's a same monologue giving information. If you'd like, someone is asking you how to go to the big supermarket, for example, in the center of the town. So how can you explain to them? Again, giving information how to go to the cinema. Sustain or not putting a case or a debate. If you are discussing something with a person, whether um, what do you think of bullying? Why do you think it's there? What can we do about it? How can we help our friends? Uh, Publicans addressing audiences. So they are giving you different kinds of ideas that can help you mingle the four skills together, or in other words, integrate the four skills together with a methodology used in class in order to help the students to practice using the knowledge taught, whether it's vocabulary or grammar. How do they insist on doing such things? They insisted on doing such things using interaction. They insisted on the idea of using group work, pair work. And they have set a number of activities over here that can be used by teachers. It's a kind of reminder for the teachers. As you can see, overall, spoken interaction, written interaction, online interaction, which is one of the focuses of our session today, that we can yeah, work with them online. They can other people on uh, in a different class, in a different school. Uh, they can interact with an app online. So how can we use the info gain, uh, whether it's grammar or vocabulary, in order to help the students to speak uh, online, whether online or face to face with other people in order to discuss matters using the language. Uh, goal or we are going to discuss them in details in a few minutes. So again, here they have uh, insisted on the idea of interaction. So how are we going to help the students to do this kind of interaction? This can be done through mediation. Mediation means what? Mediation means the context through which you are going to help your students to learn and speak or interact. Uh, for example, if you have a listening um, dialogue on the computer, they are going to listen to it. That's a media, media uh, 
on what we call it mediation. If you are going to help them later on to read a comprehension passage related to the topic that they listened to and discussed, this is called the medium. That's a text. If they are going to read a poem, for example, that's a media or a medium. And so it's it, it's the the mediation means the context through which you are going to help your students to learn the language that you are suggesting. Here they have discussed this in full. They said mediating a text, we have mediating a text, mediating concepts, mediating communication. They mentioned here mediating a text. What kind of texts can we use? We can have, uh, for example, getting specific information in speech or in writing, explain data through diagrams and graphs, like the exams of the IELTS, for example, uh, processing in speech and writing, processing text, having a text, um, a translating a written text, note taking, expressing a personal response to creative text, and analysis and criticism of creative text. Notice these are the different ways of interacting with different kinds of texts <coughs> that you can introduce to your own students. So, uh, just or the researchers here are suggesting different kinds of texts, but at the same time, they are attracting our attention as teachers to a different a very important point, which is mediating concepts, collaborating in a group and leading group work. So if we are collaborating in a group, facilitating collaborative interaction with peers, the students are going to sit together. How are we going to help them to do work on the kind of text or media that we are introducing to them? If it's a reading passage, how are you going to divide it among your students? Are you going, for example, to divide the, the comprehension passage into different paragraphs? Is going to get a paragraph. They're going to sit together, read it together, get out the most important information or answer certain questions, for example, or fill in, for example, of um, a text. And then they start stand up and they present the idea that they have and then we can ask the students together to put all the paragraphs in front of them and start asking them to think uh, which do you think which paragraph do you think should come before the other one so here we help them to understand the sequence of the passage sequence of ideas of the passage so this is going to help them to understand the passage quite clearer so uh, facilitating how are you going to facilitate it this is very important Another uh, way, for example, of using it to facilitate this is, for example, by using the jigsaw puzzle of reading. If you are uh, familiar with the jigsaw uh, idea of teaching comprehension, for example, the idea of the jigsaw puzzle is that uh, we divide the, the, the comprehension and we have uh, divide the students into groups. Let's say, for example, we have a comprehension passage of four paragraphs. So we have four groups, each group of four students. So uh, in each group, we give one paragraph of the comprehension passage to the students. So we are going to divide the comprehension passage into uh, paragraph A, B, C, and D. So each student inside the group is going to have an A, a B, a C, and a D. But they are not going to show it to each other. They are going to read it silently for, let's say, five minutes first. And then we ask all the A's. The, the students who have the A paragraph from all the groups to come and sit together, all the Bs together, Cs together, and Ds together. So they, and then they are going to sit down and start re, re discussing the info that they got out of the paragraph that they had. And then when they make sure that they really understood the point quite clearly, we get them back to their own groups. And then they start e explaining to each other what they understood from paragraph A, then B, then C, then D. And then we have, we make a general discussion with the whole class to make sure that all the class got the right information inside the passage. So this is an idea of a G. So that's a kind of facilitating collaborative interaction with peers, collaborating to contrast meaning. We can ask the students, give this some uh, the different groups uh, one just one paragraph, as I told you, and then we give we ask them to think of questions that they can own colleagues. Um, 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 I'm sorry, we can um, give them the whole comprehension passage, and then we should we say we say group one, you are going to make questions for paragraph one. Uh, uh, group two, you are going to make questions for paragraph two, and so on and so on. And 
each group is going to ask the other ones these questions. And so we make sure the students got the whole idea of the passage. It's a kind of interaction, contrasting meaning. Or we can ask the students after they have understood discussed it to start uh, getting into groups with a uh, for and against for example if you are uh, if you support a certain uh, uh, project concerning climate change in your country uh, do you support it or you don't support it why you do why you don't so we have different kind of interaction among the groups and they can set this in the form of three maps, mind maps, or they can uh, put it in the form of a diagram of any kind, and they present it to the rest of the group. And notice here also, they have mentioned the idea of leading group work, managing interaction, encouraging conceptual talk. This is the most important thing, conceptual talk. Means to the, you have to help your students to discuss the info inside the different passages and the listening and the different items that you are using in class to make sure that they really got the main idea of the lesson. And then mediating communication, facilitating pluricultural space. We are going to discuss this in a few minutes. Acting as an intermediary in informal situations, you as a teacher, you pass among your students and see what they are doing. You're monitoring, discuss things with them. You try to help them to get uh, on common ground with each other if they have great differences in opinion and make sure that they understood well, everything is going fine. Facilitating communication in delicate situations and disagreements. Sometimes in students, they disagree a lot with each other. So how can you help them to fix these disagreements? And at the same time, keeping in mind all the different kinds of methodologies that you can use over there. So as you can see, the four, um, um, four skills of the language have been developed into uh, or mingled with the idea of interaction and mediation and they have stressed so much the importance of interaction and mediation so again it gets back to the main idea of the passage which is um, uh, uh, the main idea of the, the idea of the sefer which is why is the sefer fundamentally used it's fundamentally used uh, for the development of different curriculum uh, different uh, courses and exams by looking backwards on the needs of the students so again, this is the most important thing. If we are going to change our classes into interactive classes through these ideas, different kinds of ideas, which are suggestions and recommendations, you can benefit from them to help you to assess your students first. And then on the other hand, to help you to develop the practice of the language of your own students for real language. Uh, an important point Again, uh, one, this is uh, how the descriptors look like uh, through the Sefer booklet. And by the way, um, I'm going to put all the uh, links at the very end, the references at the end. Uh, they are all for free on the European Council. You get all of them over there. Uh, they, this is how they set it. They set it, they have divided the mediation into mediating the text, concepts, communication. And how does it look like for A1, for A2, B1, B2, and so on? For example, I can convey simple, predictable information given in short, simple texts like signs and notices, posters, and programs. While the student of B1 is going to say I can convey information given in a clear, well-structured informational text on subjects that are familiar or of personal current interest. So as you notice over here, I can means that we are giving the mic to the students to speak out and say how they feel about the things that they are learning and this can help us as teachers to form different kinds of um, surveys or assessment forms that we can give to our own students and make it very simple in order to try to understand how far are they developing with the language or in other words how far do they see themselves developing with the language so uh, we can use it for ourselves as teachers to assess our own students and at the same time we can make different kinds of very simple forms out or templates out of them in order to help our students to make self-evaluation and thus become more aware of the learning of the language and what they need to concentrate on or what do they need to develop and what they should ask the teacher to do in order to help them to develop certain weak points that they are already having with the learning of the language. Uh, so when then we get to 
two, uh, one of the most important points mentioned through the new revisions uh, of the Sefer, which is online interaction. They have discussed the idea of the online interaction on two levels. The first one, online conversation and discussion and goal-oriented online transactions and collaboration. With the online conversation and discussion, they said it focuses on conversation and discussion online as a multimodal phenomena phenomenon with an emphasis on how interlocutors means the speakers communicate online to handle both serious issues and social exchanges in an open-ended way. In other words, we need to help our students to discuss different things, even with other people online, in order to speak about different topics, even very social ones, very simple ones. Like, for example, if we have friends on Facebook, what are you discussing with your friends on Facebook? Facebook. So we can pick very small topics, uh, which can help them to discuss different things that are going on in society. And when they develop well with the simple topics, we can then move them to serious topics, for example. Like, for example, we have heard about the elections, for example, in USA. So that's a serious topic. So uh, have they reached the level where we can help them to understand about this and speak about it? But what about your country? So we can compare, for example, the uh, system of elections, for example, between the US and their own country. For example, uh, simple topics like have making friends. How do you think making friends can be in your take place in your country? How do you think does it take place in a so-and-so country? So again, we are helping them to compare things. So are you using the, the online in um, online uh, uh, um, tool uh, as a kind of multi-model phenomenon? So it has more than it's like a double-edged weapon, but in a good way, of course, not a, in a bad way. We are helping the students to discuss different things using the language uh, in order to help them to feel free with the what we call the functioning of the grammar and the vocabulary that they have already learned. Again, with the new revisions of the Sefer, they have got to discuss, this is how does it look like, by the way, inside the Sefer. Uh, they have set it like this in a box, online interaction, online conversation and discussion, uh, level C2, for example, or C1. Um, uh, and then they divided the situations into personal, into public, occupational, educational. See, they have given you an array of ideas and topics that through which you can uh, think and reflect and uh, choose different kinds of ideas that can help you as a teacher in order to uh, discuss different things with your own uh, students. For example, here in C1, the students can adapt his or her uh, register according uh, to uh, I'm sorry, to the context of online interaction moving from one register to the other within the same exchange if necessary. So how can they do it? Can they do it? How they can do it on the personal side, uh, public as a participant in an online support group, occupational during a staff committee meeting or in an online forum for students and teachers at, uh, of the same discipline. So uh, they are giving you different kinds of suggestions that can help you as a teacher to reflect. So this is the most interesting thing about this effort. They are giving us ideas which can benefit us or even remind us whether we are uh, teachers, what we say, we are a pre-service or in-service teachers, whether we are experienced or we need more experience. Uh, another uh, uh, level uh, that has been discussed concerning the online um, uh, idea as well, uh, the goal-oriented online transactions and collaboration. The scale focuses on the potentially collaborative nature of online interaction and transactions that have specific goals as a regular feature of contemporary life. This is very, very important. Again, specific goals. So we need to have certain objectives that can help us while we are planning for the online interaction that the students are going to do. What's the main objective behind this? So the students are going to be working towards this objective so they are going to achieve the uh, aim required at the very end. Uh, the aim, one point over here is the idea of um, uh, a, a culture exchange with students in different schools. For example, if we have a group of students in the UK, for example, they are exchanging with a group of students in, in Japan or US exchanging with students in Japan. So the, for example, each one of them is going to speak about their country. So the students are going to prepare something about their country. They can make it through a 
PowerPoint, they can make it through a kind of uh, drama uh, presentation, they are, can do it in the form of a discussion, for example. So they are going to listen to those of the UK and the UK are going to listen to them. And so they are going to benefit from the language learned on both sides. And this can be done um, um, uh, on, a, uh, on different scales. We, can, uh, we cannot only do it with students, we can do it with teachers, by the way. Um, uh, maybe on a different context, I can tell you about the idea of lesson jamming that we have done in collaboration with a number of teachers before. So again, here you, you can do this kind of cultural exchange. Uh, many, many teachers are the growing, the number of teachers is growing nowadays concerning this idea of um, uh, cultural exchange. And this again, how it looks like uh, in the Sefer again, um, they have set you uh, the abilities of the students. What can the students do at this level? Can collaborate online with a group that is working on a project, justifying proposals, seeking clarification, and being a supportive role in order to accomplish um, shared tasks. So again, here we have, um, it, it gives us uh, as teachers, how can, we assess uh, items that we can use to assess our own students. And at the same time, they are giving you ideas as a teacher how to use it on the personal, public, occupational, and educational level to think of different activities that can help your students with that. Uh, one of the interesting things also that has developed with the, uh, uh, with the Sefer uh, and uh, Uh, well, one also of the uh, most important ideas, which again uh, has been developed with the new revisions of the Sefer, is called plurilingualism and pluriculturalism. These were already over there um, inside uh, inside the old Sefer, but they were not developed. But with the changes that have taken place with having lots of immigrants around the world, having people moving to work in different countries, uh, trade has been going on more um, vibrant around the world and people are traveling here and there more so we are having families who are settling in different countries and thus their children know more than one language so they have more than one, one uh, culture in the background so many teachers unfortunately at the beginning they did not accept this idea and they believed that the best way is to help them to settle means that they have to accept the culture and the language that they are going to learn in the language uh, in uh, of the language uh, of the country that they have settled in so this started causing problems because the students started losing interest on the long run because the teachers were no longer interested in their culture or their identity and they felt lost they are felt they are not part of the new language and the new country that they are uh, studying about so nowadays with the um, uh, voices coming higher than before discussing this problem the 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 suffer the new suffer visions introduced this idea of plurilingualism and pluriculturalism and they um, insisted on the idea of respecting this idea and how to use it for the benefit of the students they believed in the idea that the student is a social agent meaning that the student has to have an active part in the learning of the language in order to be more interested and get more involved in the learning of the language. So one of the ways to do this is to develop the idea of plurilingualism and pluriculturalism. According to the Sefer, plurilingualism concept, it's the dynamic and developing linguistic repertoire of an individual user or learner. So a dynamic developing of linguistic repertoire, meaning that the students have more than one linguistic background. They have more than one language. They have different characteristics. How can we help them uh, to show uh, or to speak about these different kinds of um, um, uh, languages that they have already learned or they experience and how to express their identity at the same time. And this can be done through pluriculturalism, which is an approach to the self and others as complex rich beings, which act and react from the perspective of multiple identifications. So uh, here, uh, one of the most interesting ideas is uh, when, for example, in your class, you are dealing with a lesson about uh, festivals, for example, which is very famous and common in Japan. Um, we can, uh, you can ask the students, if you have different kinds of nationalities in class, you can ask the students to prepare something about the different 
festivals that they have. So when you come to the day when the lesson is going to be presented, each student or group of students even are going to speak about the different festivals that they have in their own countries. And so they, in this case, they will be using uh, the language in order to speak about something personal. So in this case, you are showing respect to their own identity. So this is going to make them much happier with your lessons and with the school where they are studying. And this is going to help them more in, get more engaged in studying of the language. I have met one of the teachers uh, in an IETAFL conference um, last year or the year before, and she told me she's teaching, I think, in Germany or in Holland. I think Holland. She told me I have 23 nationalities in my own class. Can you imagine 23 nationalities? 23 nationalities means 23 identities. So we cannot skip this. We cannot forget about this. When uh, in one of the, my other classes, I had students, uh, I had a student from a, a, an African country, which is called the Commerce Islands. He have come to Cairo in order to, with a scholarship to study the language to get a better job. And I had students from different governorates or different states around Egypt. So when we came to discuss this idea, idea of your uh, uh, hometown, I asked each one of them to speak about his hometown and what are the developments that happened to this hometown since they were young. How do they? How did they see it in the past, and how do they see it nowadays? So they had to go back to the internet. They had to read. They had to find out. They got pictures, and they made us a kind of chart. Each one of them made a chart, which was very interesting and interactive, uh, about the changes that took place with their own uh, governorates or their own hometowns, and how it was highly. Uh, uh, effective and this uh, this uh, student from Commerce Islands he uh, was not very good at English and he could not speak Arabic and he was not uh, and he could speak French so I had to use my basic French in order to help him to develop the learning of the English in order to be able to speak about his own country so it was rather interesting and at the same time I showed respect towards their identity and their cultural background so it really made a difference in the learning of the language. So these are two of uh, this, these two, two, two items can be used in collaboration with the idea of online, again, online assessment, online interaction. So as you can see, it's a kind of uh, net network that has been getting framework, getting together. The four skills of the language, the receptive and the productive, how we use them with the interactive ideas through mediation, the text that we are going to use, and we can use them online to express different ideas like pluriculturalism and plurilingualism. See how the framework, the whole framework of uh, the sefer has been getting uh, together. Uh, an interesting idea also um, that has been added to the sefer, um, which is called a parallel project. They said that we need to take a look at young learners at, in order to help teachers of young learners. So they made what they call the parallel project, where uh, they divided it in two parts. So one for teachers who teach from ages 7 to 10 and the other for teachers who teach ages 11 to 15. And they have set, uh, divide them again according to the all the new, uh, levels of the Sefer, the new ones, the pre-A1, A1, A1 plus and so on. And uh, they have divided it into two parts and they have set it in this format. For example, uh, and they followed the same pattern again of the receptive and the the receptive activities, the productive activities, interaction, mediation, same idea. They followed all this. And they did, for example, here, uh, this is what they gave us. Uh, here we have uh, level A1, uh, pre-A1 and A1, communicative language strategies, receptive activities, spoken reception. Uh, take a look at this one, A1. Can follow speech that is very slow and carefully articulated with long pauses for him or her to assimilate meaning. So here, this is an indication for the teacher to be aware of the level of the students that he or she is going to work with. So as you can see here, it's a kind of assessment set to help the teacher to assess their own students. Again, is it relevant for that age? Yes, it's relevant for that age. What overall listening comprehension? What, here, uh, what kind of statement can the students make at or do at this level, they can say, I can understand the simple description of a room 
for example, a classroom, a bedroom. I can understand a very simple description of an object. I can follow a short story if I listen to it and look at it several times and so on and so on so see you as a teacher can these items can help you to assess your own students make your own format or template to assess your own students and at the same time you can use it uh, in a very simple format to give it to your own students at the end of the week at the end of the month to give it to become aware of the learning that they are doing even if you are dealing with very young kids and you can um, do this change this into uh, smiling faces or sad faces they can choose for example today i learned five new words which are uh, for example doll cat book and so on uh, and the students are going to say yes they are happy they really learned or they were not able to understand and you can make faces for them and so on and so on uh, i will mention something about this idea of ass assessment formats later on templates uh, so again, they have done the same thing as you can see here with the B1, B1 plus level concerning productive activities. Again, can rehearse and try out new combinations, can define the features of something concrete, can correct mix-ups of tenses and expressions if they are relevant, relevant and how can we use it to help the students to express their own ideas. And this is for 11 ages, 11 to 15 and how they can mention the idea of uh, uh, that they can speak about what they were really able to, to understand or do or learn the whole week. Uh, but uh, the same thing again is done with online interaction, interaction st strategies and so on. You can find lots of them again with the online interaction again with B1 and B1 plus. You, you can find this is applied for uh, both uh, groups from seven to 10 and 11 to 15 concerning all the levels um, that you mentioned, the skills that you mentioned before, up to C1, because they believe that um, uh, the, up to the age of 15, the students do not get to the level of C2. Um, if you go, uh, these are uh, these are the references that I have used uh, when preparing my presentation and working on the Sephora. I've been working on it, analyzing it, and giving sessions about it for almost two years or two years and a half now. And uh, you can find here at the, the bottom here, uh, or in the middle here, sorry. self-assessment grids. These are found already on the, um, on the website of the Council of Europe. They are for free. You can download them. They are for different levels. You can find different kinds of templates of assessment that you can use it for different levels. And you can even adjust them to use them in, uh, uh, for your own students or your own classes according to uh, the usage that you can provide, uh, that you need. Uh, a very important point to mention before I leave uh, is that I'm giving this um, uh, description of the whole Sefer in the form of an interactive course for five weeks. It's for free on EVO. Uh, EVO, this is part of uh, International TESOL, and I have been giving this uh, course on it for two years, and this is the third one for free. They are celebrating their 20th anniversary this year. You can uh, start registering on any of the sessions of the EVO starting the 5th of January, and the EVO proposals uh, for 2021 are already found here on this link. Uh, my session is already is over there. It's called Sefer versus Assessment. And you can go over there. You can uh, attend um, uh, the, the introductory uh, webinar, which is going to be um, uh, presented later on. You can find the link again on the uh, EVO proposal here uh, page. And uh, you can uh, just uh, what we call we sign up over there. You have an account over here there. And on when the, they are going to send you the time of the webinar and the, then you can start registering on the 5th of January. Um, this is going to be the link where I'm going to be holding the course, but it's not uh, working now. You can go over there, but you can just see the page. You cannot interact with it. Um, um, I'm on course. I just discuss all what we have mentioned in details. And I ask the teachers to apply diff, uh, diff, it on different lessons, and I discuss it, the application with them in details, uh, so they get the whole picture in them. Um, so far, this has been the idea of the Sefer and the new changes that took place and the online interaction. And if you have any questions, you are most welcome. These are the references that I used, and uh, you are most welcome. Uh, thank you, Alan.
if you have any questions, you're most welcome. Thank you. These are my um, my contacts. And uh, here I have uh, this blog where uh, you can find different ideas from um, different uh, plenary speeches of different uh, well-known uh, trainers all around the world. And uh, the YouTube channel, again, we have different kinds of interviews with uh, different uh, famous trainers and different kinds of sessions that I've given concerning the Sefer and other ideas as well. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Gabriella, if uh, anyone would like to have any question, they are welcome. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, yeah, this was a very solid and profound introduction to the CEFA and the CEFA CV with uh, the basic important ideas. Yes. So, is there, are there any questions? Hello. Yeah, Hello. Please. yeah please ask. Hello. Sorry, I cannot turn on my camera. Uh, I'm in the middle of cooking time, so uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, my camera is off. But I, uh, in my university, uh, currently we are trying to align our current curriculum to a more can do base cipher based curriculum. And we are trying to figure out what kind of topics, what kind of, sorry, what kind of English skills are uh, appropriate to use in our curriculum right now. And I, so, sorry, I came in the middle of the session. So I'm not sure like what kind of topics uh, this uh, covered in your presentation, but if you can like explain to me or oh, what kind of topics or what kind of uh, English skills you're focusing on in your institution, or if it, there's anything that unified um, skills that you're going to cover in yourself as a far based curriculum. Uh, hi, Koke. Um, uh, where, where do you work exactly? Do you work at university or at school? I'm working at Univers Soka University in Tokyo. It's a it's very village side of Tokyo. Yeah, you are you are teaching ESP classes or foundation or general English. So we are teaching general English mainly. Uh, plus we have some couple ESP courses for low major uh, science and nursing. Yes, and the general courses that you are preparing they are for which students? Sorry, they are for specialized students. The the courses the found the general courses are they for general students? or for specific students, for example, engineering, science, and so on? Those classes are four skill-based courses uh, provided for low major education, uh, nursing, and uh, science major students in law, I guess. Yeah. Y yeah. So you need, um, so your question is uh, what kind of ideas what kind of, uh, specific that we should skills? help you with? If you have like, if you have unified curriculum in your institution um, that based on CIFAR, what kind of skills do we do you teach? What kind of uh, uh, language activities do you do or employ in your classroom? I, yeah, those are the questions. Yes. So uh, for, for uh, since you are giving a general uh, course, it's it's an EAP course uh, because uh, mm -hmm. for a uh, academic purposes, they are studying nursing or they are studying science. So you need to give them something related to what they are studying to get interested in what uh, you are teaching them. So uh, um, you need to give them the four skills, the listening, speaking, reading, and writing, plus grammar and vocabulary. So you have to uh, set them on uh, the same level, yani the reading and uh, plus the vocabulary. Uh, they have to be related to their own specialization or if you are giving the same course to a number of classes in, I mean different, mm. different ones, nursing, science, engineering, and so on. So give them something general for all of them. So when they open the, the book, they find, for example, different reading passages about these different topics. And beside them, put them a little grammar. See what's the main problem with the grammar over there. Is it, for example, the usage of the tenses because they are beginners? So you need to put the main tenses only, the present simple continuous perfect and the past tense, uh, if that's the main problem. If you find that the problem with them is that 
they cannot form uh, good written sentences, you can give them um, an idea about the different clauses, how to write clauses. For example, the time clauses, uh, how to use when, how, when, uh, where, because, uh, if conditions, however, uh, so it, it depends on the level of the students that you have. If they are beginners, for sure you have to work on their tenses. Plus, uh, different kinds of comprehension passages that have to do with the, the kind of lessons that they study in their own college. Of course, it's not pure scientific, it's just a general idea. General idea. For example, if you are teaching, for example, uh, like I, where I teach, I teach economics. It, they learn, study economics. So I give them something about the stock market. Uh, they study politics. So I give them something about the changes that took place in the stock markets all over the world and how the governments dealt with it. So it depends on the kind of um, um, uh, curricula that they study. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate your advice. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope this will help you enough. Does thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I think Alan here is saying, do you have examples of use of descriptors for online interaction? Um, uh, Alan, what do you mean by this? Uh, uh, what kind of examples are you? Can you, you open your mic and tell us your idea? Yes. Hello. Alan, we cannot hear you. Alan? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Do you have any examples of, of uh, classes, uh, of online classes using these, uh, where these descriptors were applied or assessed? You, you mean is like tutorial classes? You mean tutorial yes, classes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actual online. No, no. Online, actually, actual implementations of uh, your, uh, what, how you tried this. Of online classes? In teaching, yes. Yeah. Uh, try to see English first. Try to uh, check the website yes. of English first. They right. are very okay. good. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have also the website of teaching English. Uh, right. uh, this is one of mm. the best uh, websites that you can use to help you with the, your lessons. Right. Because yeah. they have re ready-made lessons <clears throat> over there with different steps and for the level, which level of students, the kind of aids that you can use, and so on. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Oh, it's almost about time. Yeah, I was very impressed. Uh, I'm very much interested in plurilingual, pluricultural communication, and uh, yeah, but maybe this would be another talk for uh, for you to uh, <laughs> go more in detail about this one. Huh? Yeah, because You're I'm most teaching, welcome, uh, I'm teaching German, so when I have students, they have. Japanese and they have English and then they study German and I try to connect these languages and try to bring them together but it is not much established here in Japan bringing several languages in one classroom normally say Japanese is Japanese and English is English and German is German so I should not use English in my German class but I say the brain has no walls so what and yeah so this would be a topic I would would like to go into detail. You're most welcome. You can get in touch with me anytime. We can have a Zoom yes. Uh, yes. meeting and we can discuss it if you'd like to. Yes, I would like to, really, yes. I'm I'm in a working You're group on the CFR here in Japan. So I'm uh, discussing uh, some of these points and I think it's very important that to exchange with other countries too, to have different point of views on the topic. Yes, uh, that would be great. And uh, we can do it as well on our community here on teaching ESL hub where I belong I'm the founder of this community uh, we do different kinds of interviews concern with different trainers all around the world concerning different teaching uh, sessions uh, so we can even uh, inter um, cooperate with uh, your SEFR uh, interest group and we can get in touch and have such a discussion yes, online that like would yes. be a great one yeah would be very yeah, well I'd be looking for yeah very nice I'd be looking forward to it yeah thank you so, uh, please, everyone, can you unmute yourself and give some kind of applause? Thank you very much. <laughs> so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's Thank very, you. Very energetic, very energizing talk today. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope you benefit from it. And if you have any questions, you can write yes. to me anytime. If you want the PowerPoint, you are most welcome again. Write to me. I will okay. send it right Thank away. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. You. See you. Thank, Thank you. you. See you. See I will stop. Uh, I will stop recording now. Okay. Okay.